welcome to Metal Base Microscope, Episode 1. Since this is the first episode, we're going to do a quick mission statement here about what we're going to do. It's going to be a regular series, and what I'm going to do is examine metal and hard rock bass players from the past and present. We're going to talk about their gear, what makes them influential, their technique, songwriting, whatever makes them most noteworthy. We're going to pick it apart and see why they're awesome and what we can do to be more like them. So, with that being said, this first episode, we're going to do D.D. Verney from Overkill. Now, when I first said I was going to do this, I told a few people about it, and they were kind of surprised I picked D.D. Dee Dee Verney. They thought I'd go after one of the Godfathers, Geezer Butler, Steve Harris, someone like that. But especially in modern metal, I feel like D.D. Dee Dee Verney deserves credit for something that not a lot of people give it to him for and is crucial to modern metal bass playing. What's so crucial? Clank. What is clank? Clank is something constantly described in bass forums, guitar forums, any conversation about modern metal bass, the word clank comes up. It's kind of a descriptor word like the word gent. It's used to describe a specific sound associated with a certain style of tone. Clank tends to be a grinding, metallic, upper, mid, and treble area presence that modern metal bass players use, usually with a lot of gain or some overdrive, to cut through the guitars and have a presence that sits up on top and cuts through the mix. I would argue that Dee Dee Verney is the inventor of Clank. So let's check out why I think this way and when it happened. Dee Dee Verney is one of the founding members of the thrash band Overkill. They were an early influencer on the East Coast, and their first two albums were called Feel the Fire and Taking Over. When this first came out, uh, Dee Dee was using uh, a Rickenbacker bass and had a much punchier, growling kind of tone, not anything like what he's using now. It had some distortion on it, a little bit of drive, but it was a rounder, again, growlier, punchier kind of sound that was more like the other players of the era. So to hear an example of this, we're going to hear a quick clip from the song Power Surge off their second album, Taking Over. good, solid metal bass tone, but definitely not what Dee Dee was known for later and what he's still known for today. The follow-up to Taking Over was the album Under the Influence. This came out in the late 80s, and I feel like on this album, Overkill not only found their signature sound and their signature songwriting style, but something massive happened in between Taking Over and Under the Influence when it comes to Dee Dee Verney's gear and his sound and his presence in the band. Unlike a lot of players, where you hear a slow evolution from one sound to another as they start gathering their own personality or they try out new gear and things, it was a sudden, clean-cut movement from Dee Dee's old sound to his new one. What changed? Well, not only did his amps change, but his entire bass rig, and the biggest part of it being he switched from Rickenbacker to using BC Rich basses, which I believe he was endorsed with for a while, and the central component to his sound that's still used to this day. EMG pickups. In fact, on Under the Influence, when this huge leap happened, he was using a setup just like this, a double precision setup, both EMGPs. Now, the first time I heard this, it was on a song called Drunken Wisdom. I hadn't heard anything from Overkill in a while, and a friend of mine said, you've got to hear this album, and he put on Drunken Wisdom first. It starts in with a pretty heavy, sludgy guitar riff, but D.D. kind of owns this one. When he comes in, he just obliterates the mix, and you can hear this loud, metallic, ringing destruction that he just seems to have invented out of nowhere. Let's hear a quick clip from that and check that sound out.
he did this, there was nothing like it at the time. I mean, like, I remember going back and just rewinding this over and over and just laughing with a friend of mine because it was just so over the top and hyper aggressive. Neither one of us could believe it. Let's hear a few other examples of it and what it sounds like on its own. Here's a clip from the song Head First where you'll hear it along with the drums and then you'll also hear it solo. Again, there was nothing like this at the time. It was a totally unique bass sound, and it was so dominant in the mix. Even being a young bassist myself, I, I didn't even know if I liked it at first. It was just so aggressive, but I really grew to love it. And this is pretty much where my argument starts that Dee Dee invented Clank. There was nothing like it, and people are still using versions of this sound to this day. Now, over the years in the different albums, his tone will change a little bit, but it's always very characteristically this. It's identifiable, and it seems more like he bends it to fit the mix and whatever's going on with the guitars at the moment, rather than a radical tone change. So let's hear another sample from him off The Years of Decay with the song Nothing to Die For. something a little more recent. This is Mean Green Killing Machine off of the grinding wheel. Now, amp-wise, Didi's been a little bit of a mystery man over the years. I've seen him with a number of different setups. Early on, he used PV cabinets once in a while. Uh, I've also seen him use even Ampeg 810s. It seems like he kind of goes along with maybe whatever the backline supplied at venues is or what a tour rider gives to him, but he doesn't seem to settle too heavily on one exact thing. Early in the day, though, when he first came out with this sound, Part of what produced that sound was he used an old preamp from ADA called the MB-1. The MB-1 only lasted a few years. I think DD was not only an endorser, but there was actually a preset built into its memory on his exact tone. But it seemed like he moved on from that one pretty quickly. And again, I've seen him use PV over the years, but he doesn't seem to be really settled on an amp rig as far as I've ever seen. But looking at his pickups and his basses again, the only change he's made to the pickups over the years has been he's always stuck with EMG. That's been the constant all the way through their career up till now. But what he did is he switched from the P or precision style pickups to using J style pickups. Sometimes they're the standard J or sometimes they're J hidden in a soap bar kind of configuration. 
He also settled on a model uh, towards the end of his time dealing with B.C. Rich called The Widow. He left B.C. Rich, but still uses that body shape. It's built by another luthier or another company. I'm not sure exactly. I don't recognize the logo and couldn't really find much information. But it pretty much looks to be an identical copy of the B.C. Rich Widow he's used all this time and, again, has those EMG Js in it. Now, as far as technique goes, Dee Dee has an absolutely amazing right hand. He's a pick player, but I've seen this guy live, I've heard board recordings, and he hits like a jackhammer. He's precise. I'd say, honestly, probably one of the best pick players in metal right now. He really is. Uh, him and Dave Ellison are phenomenal examples of how to be tight and precise with it, but Dee Dee just has an aggression that you just really rarely hear along with that level of precision at the same time. So again, I give him full credit for coming up with Clank and think we all really kind of owe him a debt for the massive influence that he's had on modern metal bass tone. He's one of those guys who plays for the song. He plays really aggressively. He's not overly flashy, but his tone is undeniable. If you haven't seen Overkill or haven't checked out any of their more recent albums or basically anything through their history, these guys have flown the thrash flag from day one. And from what I've heard on the upcoming album at the time this is recorded, no signs of slowing down. You owe it to yourself, if you're into metal bass at all, to check these guys out and give D.D. his due. He just invented what most of us have come to try and imitate to this day. So that's going to wrap it up for episode one of Metal Bass Microscope. Like, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff, and hit me below in the comments. Tell me bassists that you think might be featured, or someone I should take a look into. I've already got the next five or six episodes planned out, but you never know. You might hit me with somebody that I think needs to come before the guys I already have set. But, again, check out Overkill, check out DD, and check out the next episode. I'll see you on that one.